Hi, I'm Stephen Donnelly. I'm with Stephen J. Donnelly Photography, and right now we're standing at the White River Gallery in Montague, Michigan, where I have a featured artist display that, through the end of the month. And we have different artists that come in here, around 23 in, from local artists, and each of us will have a display up during the year, um, sometimes on this wall or throughout the gallery. We always have displays from pottery to water pastels to acrylics to hand-woven materials, fabric arts, um, all sorts of different things and handmade jewelry as well. So as a photographer, I look at my work a little bit differently sometimes and I also expand into some different areas of photography or different areas of artwork that people may not um, consider putting photography into. So one of the things I'll do is like some leather pieces where I actually will print a photograph onto a piece of leather, hand sew that into um, another piece and then wrap it on a flask or I make boxes and other things like that. And this is something that people don't normally see or associate with being photography. But I also do hand carved leather as well. So I will actually draw out an image or a pattern and carve that onto the leather piece, dye the leather and it also gets stamped so there's a little bit more of a 3D effect to it instead of just being a flat picture. But my main thing that I love to do is my photography and I've been doing this since I was 15 years old so for over 20 years um, is when I learned how to develop my own black and white film and print my own pictures in a dark room which I still do to this day on occasion I do have a fully working wet dark room with two enlargers that I can use. Um, none of this display here is made with that because of where I was. I didn't really feel like carrying around a, a cooler and ice to keep everything cool because with film and you're in a hot, especially if you're in a hot environment, you need to keep that in a lower temperature. And when you're out camping, that's not always the easiest thing. So, I do do some different techniques with my photography besides just the leather. I have some prints that I do on aluminum, which is up here. And I've done some stuff on copper. And I've done some stuff on plastics like plexiglass or polycarbonate. I've done the leather. And I do have one piece here um, on a different wall than this one that's printed on wood veneer. And I've done some brass as well, which I have a piece in the gallery right now as well. And I like to explore those different avenues because photography isn't just about um, taking a picture, it's about telling a story and how I print that piece, how I display that piece, all helps with telling the story that I want to tell. And most of my work is dealing with landscapes, it is dealing with nature and part of that is because there's a, a wonderful um, phrase that you'll find out or you, you see when you go out to some of the national parks, especially Glacier National Park, that says enlightenment begins where the pavement ends. And for me, that's so very true because once I get out of this, you know, cement and steel jungle, as people will call it, I get out of the city and you put me onto a trail walking, I just become relaxed and peaceful. Everything, all my worries, everything kind of dissipates and I start to see different things in nature and even my titles of these pieces most of the time is trying to give you an idea of what was going through my mind when I took the, pe took the picture. So there's a lot more to photography than just taking a camera, click and say, okay, I got a great shot, I'm gonna move on to the next. A lot of times I could spend half an hour at a spot before I even take a picture because I'm looking. I'm viewing it from different angles. I'm trying to see what it is that I want to tell from that piece or that location. And sometimes I'll take multiple pictures in a location and I might only use one of them or I might use a couple of them to give a different point of view from one thing, a different story from the same spot. And I have done that a couple times, um, especially with a piece that I don't have up here. Um, it's called from Death Comes Beauty, I have a picture, and it's just of a dead stump with the roots and the water flowing behind. And then I have another picture that I stepped back from that area. I went to a wider view, and it tells a different story. And that one is actually just called, you know, step, tap, step back and look a little different or look at a different view. 
So that way you can see one location can actually tell you multiple things if you stop and look for it. As I've mentioned, I learned in a dark room. And when I was working in the dark room, there's a wonderful product called Liquid Light that allowed me to explore printing on woods and metals and different things. And as I've slowly made that transition from film to digital, and I, I still can't give up film totally because there's some things about black and white film that digital just doesn't get across. I needed to find a way, how could I take these wood prints that I was doing and do the same thing digitally? Because I can't you know, cover a piece of wood and expose it with light and develop it this anymore. So did some research and found a product that allows me to treat any material to allow to accept the print. So you know, sometimes it's real simple, sometimes it's not. With aluminum, I can put that material right onto a piece of aluminum like this picture up here. And once you put that on there, that's thin enough to go through the wide format printer I have, and they'll print right onto the piece of aluminum. But even after that, it's a very fragile image. You, just a little bit of a scratch on there will destroy the picture. So you need to coat the picture again with a UV coating, so that way it's sealed in there, but it's also protected from the sunlight because this isn't something you could display behind a piece of glass. And the purpose of glass is really to protect the image, not just from dust, but from UV rays to keep something from fading. And I have to put several coats of that on to give it a much sturdier finish so just a little bump won't scratch it. But then when you get into the copper over here, these pieces you actually can't directly coat. The, the chemicals in the emulsion that you put on to accept the print react with the copper and it causes it to discolor. So there's even more steps involved in preparing the piece of copper so that those two materials never touch and then printing onto it and then again sealing it. And all of these pictures I actually just mount to a piece of wood or to a wooden frame so they can be hung on the wall. And it's a very um, contemporary sleek look where there isn't a big frame to distract you. All you have is the picture to look at. So these pieces actually I have to work on for about, well, the aluminum takes me about five to six days. The copper takes me seven to eight days just to create one picture. It doesn't matter how big it is, but there's so much time involved in coating something and then waiting for that coating to cure and then coating it and waiting for it to cure and printing and drying and it's a very long process and even when it comes to gluing it down you have to let that glue set up and dry before you can trim it and finish it. Then I also will do things like the table where this, piece, this table is actually printed onto a piece of Formica that looks like maple. And again, you have to print onto it, or code it, print it, seal it, and then embed it into the handmade table. And this is black, solid black walnut, except for the very top where the picture is. And then after that's mounted in there and everything's dried up, I put an epoxy coating over it. So there's about an eighth to a quarter inch of coating over the picture. You can never easily damage this. You have to really work on it to get anything down there. So you can set cups on there. Um, you can put different things, books or anything onto it and the picture is going to be protected. So another technique that I, I looked at and tried to figure out how to mimic was back in the early 1900s, um, some photographers would take a picture, especially of like a city scene with people in it and they'll print, make multiple prints of it, and they'll cut out the different layers, the different people as they're standing back, and then the, the buildings behind it, and give you this kind of a 3D image. And I wanted to figure out a way to do that without having to do all the cutting, and to make it so I'm doing it with the digital process again. So what I came up with is printing on plastic. And this picture here actually is printed onto three different layers of plexiglass or I've used now polycarbonate for more than the plexiglass because it's a more stable material. But I'm able to print on what I, just what I want on the layer. So the first layer is this abandoned stone house. And then behind that is the rock fall that came into the house and some trees that are now growing in it. And then behind that is the mountains. And these pictures are separated with um, 
the material so there's anywhere from an eighth of an inch to half an inch between the layers to give you a better idea of how much depth is into that picture. And I'm one of the very few, if anybody else even does this type of technique, because it is a very time consuming thing to do for one, and also it's, it's a little bit different. I hand make the frames, I do all of the printing, and I will put in, just to assemble a picture, about 10 to 12 hours. It doesn't count the several hours of work I do to prepare the image itself for the printing or any of the other steps I get involved. And I, you know, this is made out of a piece of wild cherry that I had. So I actually cut, it was rough sawn, so I had to bring it through the planer to square it up, joiner, um, or a joiner to square up a couple of the sides and flatten them, then the planer to give it a nice uniform surface on each side and then cutting it down into the frame and doing all that work. So this is really, for me, photography is a labor of, it's a labor of love. I, I enjoy what I'm doing. It's, I enjoy exploring the different avenues that I can do it in and the different ways, whether it's the leather work and making something functional or the alternatives with the aluminum or you know, even all of my, my paper prints, the more traditional look, I do it on what's called a metallic paper as a pearlescent finish. It makes some of the colors really stand out and pop. It adds a little bit more depth to the image as well. So, you know, nothing that I do anymore is just a standard photograph. You, I can't go to any photo lab to have all of this done. Um, I can get some of it done through a metallic the metallic printing I could actually get done by another company or even the canvas prints. I could send them out to a professional lab to do, but professional labs won't do it to the quality or to the st my standards. Um, all my canvas prints are actually done on museum grade materials. So it costs me more to print the piece myself and to assemble the frame than it would to send it out to one of these online printing places because of the materials that I decide to use because I want the highest quality, the longest lasting pieces that I can create, which is why I do things the way that I do, which is why everything is sealed with a varnish that protects it from UV light so that they don't fade. <laughs>